I'm Lance Cook, Certified Executive Chef of Hammock Dunes Club in Palm Coast, Florida. Today I'm going to make for you a mosaic dish that I've grown very fond of. I'm going to make it using pork, but you can use chicken, beef, and then you can do it in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, I'm going to do it in a cylindrical form. Uh, but the first application that we're going to talk about is leek ash. So leek ash, I'm not going to demonstrate it right now, but it's very easy to make. So the top portion of the leeks that you would typically use in stocks, you're going to want to wash them real thoroughly pat them dry, and then put them on a sheet pan, one layer, no oil or anything on them. Put them in the oven, about 400 degrees, anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. That's gonna result in a real dark color, kind of earthy flavor and, and profile. After they're cooled off for a little bit, once you remove them from the oven, you're gonna pulverize them just in a simple coffee grinder, and then you're gonna end up with this product right here. So a lot of earth tones, a lot of earth, aromas and things like that and this is going to be the base for one of the components of the dish then once you have that product that's nice and cooled you've pulverized it you're going to use tg also known as transglutaminase um, also known as activa rm you're going to do a half and half so 50 50 percent ratio uh, just kind of eyeball it um, and you're going to end up with this product right here so uh, it's a little bit lighter than just the ash would be by itself because of the tg being in there but that's going to be your binder so I'll explain that a little bit later. So this is the pork tenderloin. I've basically taken off the sinew, a little bit of the fat on the outside, the exterior, and anything else that I don't want to be on the end dish. Um, basically, I'm gonna just trim up the ends, kind of where it starts tapering off. Trim up both ends there. And then I'm just gonna kind of trim it to kind of round it out a little bit. Very minimal, but again, just kind of trimming it up to get a nice, even shape. From that point, you can cut it into different sections. You can do anything you want with it. Uh, but what we're gonna do is essentially cut it straight down the middle. And we're gonna open it up, and we're just gonna remember where our pieces are. So we're not gonna move anything about it, and you'll see why in a second. So we're gonna cut it down the middle again, kind of lay it on its back, and one more time. Change my gloves real quick. Now we're going to use the TG mixture. So this is the TG and the ash 50-50 as far as the blend is concerned. We're going to go pretty heavily on it. And all we're trying to do is hit the, the center of the loin. So we're not going to do the exterior. And there's a reason why. It's because I'm going to wrap it with prosciutto on the outside. And if I put this on the outside of the actual loin, uh, it's going to bleed through the prosciutto. I've done it a couple times that way and it's uh, it, it's just better not to put it on the outside unless you have a, a force meter or a different kind of wrap going around it. So here I have my prosciutto laid out. I transferred over the pork with the leek ash and the TG mixture on it. Um, it doesn't matter if it opened up or anything like that because as long as they stay in the same position, you're okay. We're gonna add just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and also on the prosciutto, we're gonna add a little bit of kosher salt and pure ground black pepper, as well as some TG to adhere the prosciutto to the pork tenderloin. And then we're gonna put the pork back together just the same way we cut it. And then we're gonna start wrapping. So just like you would a compound butter, as tight as you possibly can get. And then I'll show you the next part of the process is gonna get it even, even tighter. The reason I put prosciutto on the outside is that I sous vide it uh, at about 136 degrees for about an hour and a half. Uh, after that, I remove it and I sear it. And then we're gonna get this as tight as we can. and then we're gonna tie off the ends. So we're gonna tie off the end as close as you can get to the pork. And then we're gonna do the other end the same way. So 
So what you want to do is find the short end of the butcher's twine and just keep wrapping it like this and going towards the, the pork. And that actually presses everything on the inside to be tighter. We're going to tie that off and then trim it. And then do the same thing on this end, so short end with the saran wrap and then going towards the pork. And then tie that off. And then trim that up. So you can see it's real tight with the prosciutto wrapped. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sous vide it for about an hour and a half at 136 degrees. So we cryovac it and then we set it in the fridge for about four hours to let the transglutaminase react and become that binder. After that, we removed it from the fridge and then we're gonna place it in the water bath at 136 degrees for about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the size. Next thing we're gonna make is a molded asparagus spear. Um, I use these molds from Chicago Culinary FX. Uh, they have a website and you can get all sorts of different kinds. This one here is a corn niblet. Again, the one I'm going to use is an asparagus spear. So the ingredients that I put into that is just a little bit of garlic. So we're just going to slice it because what we're going to do is we're going to puree it. So we're going to have a little bit of garlic. We'll do some shallots. And I've got a hot pan behind me, so we're going to start sauteing them. Just kind of break it down a little bit. And then the other ingredients are gonna be asparagus. And again, this could be pieces of asparagus if you're using the tops. Uh, I wouldn't use the direct bottoms of them because they're very woody, but if you're not using the middle portion like these here, you could use this to, to put into the puree. Uh, also some heavy cream, 36% or 40%. Now that we have the garlic and shallot sauteed a little bit, we're gonna add the asparagus and saute that for a little bit. We're gonna put enough cream over the top of the asparagus with some pepper and some kosher salt. We're gonna cook that down a little bit until the asparagus is nice and tender and it's reduced by about half. While we're waiting on the asparagus to cook, we're going to make some threads out of the potato. So just turn the handle and you'll get threads on the other side. Typically when I cook these off, it's usually about 300 degrees. You can do it in different shapes and sizes again. Just get creative with it. So that's about all we need. We'll just use this for right now. One cool thing I learned from Rich Rosendale, Certified Master Chef, is if you take a tea diffuser and you put it in there like this and then fry it off, uh, you get these nice crisp potato nests. And I'll show you how that looks after. Foil's nice and hot, so we have the potato shoe strings in there and we're gonna flip it over once the bubbles start settling down. And you don't want too much color on it. We'll let that fry up a little bit more. So we have this nice potato nest. We're gonna season it with a little bit of kosher salt. And then we have this rotary microplane that we're gonna use and we have it filled with toasted pecans. So while it's still Got some moisture on there from the oil. We're gonna season that with the pecans and let that sit on there and attach itself. And this is the little cool nest idea with the potatoes that I was talking about earlier. So they're nice and crispy. You can season them up. You can use that as a garnish, but essentially a nice little ball or a nest. This is another component to the dish and you can use whatever mushrooms you'd like. But we have some beautiful blue oyster mushrooms if you choose to use those. Uh, there's some nice king trumpet mushrooms, so the king of the oyster mushrooms. And then we also have some golden oyster mushrooms. But I'm going to be using what's called the lion's mane. So it almost looks like cauliflower, uh, but it has almost like a crab meat texture. So you can literally peel them apart. But we're just going to cut little sections of it. So we're going to tear this off. And then we're gonna slice sections of it. And later on, we're gonna saute it 
nice and golden brown, and then use that as a garnish to the dish, along with the asparagus spear mold that we're doing. So these are pretty cool. They got different textures. They've got a lot of uh, medicinal properties. Uh, they're looking into making antibiotics with them, anti-cancer drugs, all that kind of stuff. So we'll sear those up later. Our asparagus, make sure that we're gonna puree now. So it's almost like a thick asparagus soup. We're gonna puree that until it's nice and smooth. Have this pot on a scale. I put the asparagus mixture in the chinois to strain it. I zeroed out the scale and that's how many grams I have so far. So we're gonna continue straining this. We're gonna push it through so we get a little bit of that body in there. So we're gonna pass it through the chinois and press it through. So we have 250 grams of the asparagus mixture. And we're gonna combine that with 1.5% of agar. And then we're gonna simmer it for about one minute. So we have the agar, we're looking for 3.75 grams. So we're gonna add it in little increments. And there we are. So now we're gonna put it on the stove and simmer it for one minute. So we got the agar in there now. We're gonna mix that up, simmer it for one minute. Strain it one last time through a micron bag and then put it into the asparagus mold. So we have our micron bag all set up. We're gonna take that mixture, pour it straight into the micron bag. We'll scrape that out as well, get the most out of it. We're gonna pass it through that micron bag. So this is the asparagus mold. Basically is an imprint of the asparagus. We're gonna put that mixture in there that has the agar. So I already have some in there that I'm gonna pull out in a couple minutes when I start plating up. Uh, but essentially you just fill it up all the way to the top. And that's it, when it's full like that, just give it a couple shakes and then set it into the freezer, let it set up, and that's it. For the sauce, we're gonna start with shallots. Get them tender. Add some brandy. So the flambe died down, so we're going to add the apricot cherry puree. And add port in there as well. And we're going to reduce that down to almost a second. So we, here we have that mixture that we flambe, the shallots, a little bit of brandy, the apricot, port, and cherry puree. And then we're gonna add some veal stock or demi-gloss. We make in-house, we roast off the bones. Just before you're plating, make sure you're re-seasoning everything and tasting it. Over here we have the pan ready for the mushrooms, the lion's mane mushrooms. And then we have some horseradish potatoes that we're reheating for the plate. -up. Once they're golden on both sides, season them up and they're ready for plate. So a little black pepper and some kosher salt and then reserve. And then the same pan we had the mushrooms in, we're going to go ahead and sear off the sous vide pork and get it nice and golden brown on all sides. So we have the pork roulade here, which has the mosaic on the inside. It's wrapped with prosciutto. It's been sous vide for about an hour and a half to two hours at 136. And then we seared it on high heat to get that nice golden color. So now we're gonna go ahead and carve it using a slicer knife. And then you can carve it as thick as you'd like. You could do it on an angle if you'd like. Um, I like to do two pieces. For this presentation, I'll do three. 
So we have all our mise en place. We put our asparagus down. It's room temperature on a warm plate. So it's nice and soft. We have our sauce here and I strained out the shallots. We have that beautiful pork loin with the mosaic that we've sliced. So we're gonna go ahead and plate the rest of it up right now. Here's a cannelle of the horseradish mashed potato. We'll do a couple pieces of the pork here. Some of that lion's mane mushroom. And then I have some asparagus tops that will just kind of play off of that asparagus mousse that we have. And then that potato garnish that we had, we're just gonna pop that right in the middle here. sauce and there you are